Howdy Space Cats! This week I am looking at ways to become a successful illustrator. If you've stumbled through the wastelands of YouTube, you might like to know that I make lots of videos on drawing and publishing. Why? Well, because I am an illustrator and an author. I get loads of questions on how to become an illustrator. So I'm going to give you some advice and thoughts to get you started. I went down the fairly traditional route. You know the one where you stumble about wondering what the heck you're going to do with your life until some miraculous thing happens to show you the way. Well I kind of accidentally met somebody who did a job that just blew my socks off. I ended up studying graphic design and then doing a degree in illustration and then I spent a year working as a graphic designer before ditching it all giving it up, moving to London, pounding the streets with my portfolio and going to visit as many children's publishers as possible with my work and determined to make a career out of illustration. But I really don't think you have to have a degree to become an illustrator. What you do need is a sprinkling of a few of the following things. Decide on what sort of illustration you want to focus on. For me, it was children's fiction, but it could be magazines, Sunday supplements, posters, cartoons, fabric design, pet portraits. The list is almost endless. Listen to your intuition and feel what you get excited by. What are you drawn to? Excuse the pun. What do you like to look at? Make sure that you spend at least half of your work time actually creating something. Whether that's painting, sketching, drawing, writing a bit of poetry, tearing a few things out of magazines and making a montage. Whatever it is that feeds your creative muse. It doesn't have to be all about that strand of illustration that you're interested in. You'll find that just making stuff gets you into the habit of being creative. And this really is a step you cannot miss. You need to be creating if you're going to be a creative person. You might have the romantic idea that being an artist means you can work till five in the morning and then sleep all day. This is not going to help your mission. You really need to be organised. I know, the hideous O word. Being a dishevelled mess is not going to impress anybody, particularly people who you are hoping are going to give you work. Make sure that you turn up for appointments on time and that you're tidy. And if you are putting stuff up on YouTube or Instagram or other social media, make sure that you do that regularly and on time when you say you're going to do it. I use a bullet journal to keep track of all my appointments and my things to do list. And I've got a whole playlist about that. So have a look at my bullet journal playlist if you want to do something similar. It doesn't have to be a bullet journal. You could have a diary, you could use your phone to keep track of things, or you could use a massive spreadsheet on your wall. Doesn't matter, so long as you get the job done. One of the questions that I get asked quite a lot is where do I get my inspiration from? For me, it's the natural world, but everyone is different. So you need to work out where and when you are likely to get your creative muse to strike. And you need to nurture it. If you think that lying in a bath with a glass of wine is where you get your best ideas, then make sure you make time for that and have a notebook next to the bath. If it's while you're washing up, staring into the garden, or if it's going out for a long walk, make sure you have a way of noting down those amazing ideas that strike. And if you're going through a creative dry period where nothing seems to inspire you, don't worry. This happens to all creative people. If we were having brilliant creative ideas all the time, our heads would explode. It's just a way of processing what we're doing. Just be at peace with that process and be ready to catch the next idea when it comes along. Make sure that every day you grow your contact list. This might be via email or in person. If it's via email, make sure you have something useful to offer in return for that person's email address and set yourself up with a mail system. I use MailChimp, which is perfectly adequate for what I need at the moment, but there are loads of other platforms that you can try. Tell people what you do. 
Make sure they know you're an illustrator because it might be that they are looking for somebody to help them with a project. My first published job was for an airline magazine and it was so exciting to see my first ever illustration in print going off around the world. And that brings me on to networking. Getting out into your community and actually talking to actual human beings about what you do is really, really brilliant and important. Whether it's through network events or taking a stool at a local market or putting up a show at an art centre, be on hand to explain your work. Talk to people excitedly about what you're doing because if you don't find it fascinating and enthralling, no one else will. Be in love with what you do and tell everyone. Having said that, you will need a website to show your images. Most businesses and publishers would rather have a look at a carousel on a website than have someone turn up with their portfolio or shove a flyer through their door. Sadly, they just don't have the time anymore. Use good quality images to upload. Make sure you're not sending something of 400 kilobytes. You want something megabytes. Figure out a unique way to approach them and then hopefully they will take two minutes to have a look at your website and then you can wham them with a portfolio visit. You're gonna have to develop a tough skin. Not everyone is going to like or understand what you do. If you send off a letter or an email to a publisher or a business, you're likely to get a thanks but no thanks response. This is not because they don't like your work. It's because they've probably already received 50 other similar requests that day. And if they took the time to look at everything they were sent, they would literally not have enough time to run their own business. And that's why it's really important to nurture your relationships with people and be unique. I refer you to previous points. I have kept all of my rejection letters from way back when I first started. To me, it acts as a reminder of where I've come from. But also when I started out, I figured one more rejection letter means I'm one more closer to finding work. Nothing will happen overnight. Becoming good in your craft or finding regular work is something that takes time. Not everyone will like what you do, but the important thing is that you like what you do and that you believe in it. Keep growing, keep at it, and sooner or later the work will find you. The most important thing is never to give up. A strong will is vital in illustration. And finally, you need to find others like you. Find your tribe. Find people who love what you love. People that you can chat to about other illustrators or other artists or other forms of artwork. Art can be a lonely old business, but being able to communicate with other people is really important. Plus, it can lead on to some work. If you're mixing with like-minded people, the sort of work that you want to do will find its way to you through a sort of osmosis. Here is a list of places to post your work or to approach. Social media, Instagram and YouTube are key. Your website, card companies, textile designers, magazine publishers, jigsaw makers, art centers and their gift shops, mug or t-shirt makers, book publishers, and also you can check out the Writers and Artists yearbook. I found my way into illustration almost by accident. I knew I wanted to do something arty, but I really wasn't sure what. I tried loads of different sorts of things, but then I discovered picture books and I have never looked back. One of the most important things for me was when I stopped telling people I want to be an illustrator and started telling them I am an illustrator. Try doing that, you might quite like it. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. And that covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating your book, and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go. Next week, something a little different. I'm going to take you on one of my favorite walks to try and find some inspiration. 
Until then, I'm off to buff a buffalo. I will see you next time. Nanu nanu!